Nutrients. Every living thing on earth needs food or needs nutrients. You will eat and drink on a regular basis during the day. Breakfast, lunch, dinner and in between you may eat snacks, drink tea, coffee, soft drinks or alcoholic based drinks. Humans need food and drink to provide for energy, vitamins and proteins, to build cells and to maintain your body. Once ingested, the food and drinks will be digested into molecules and ions. Several organs in your body are involved, amongst others teeth, tongue, salivary glands, gastrointestinal tract, liver, the gallbladder and pancreas. Cellular respiration converts the biochemical energy of food like amino acids, fatty acids and sugars into energy and components for the maintenance of the cells. Molecules and components that are not useful are excreted via urine and feces or stored in, for example, fat. Like humans, plants need to eat and drink. Unlike humans, plants do not have an internal system to digest food. Plants obtain the energy from absorption of solar energy. Plants are able to convert solar energy into biochemical energy and to store it. This phenomenon is called photosynthesis. Plants are photoautotroph, which means that they are able to assimilate or to fix carbon. Photoautotrophs are capable of synthesizing organic material, so their own food from inorganic substances using light as an energy source and carbon dioxide as carbon source. Humans are chemotrophs, meaning that they obtain their energy by oxidation of compounds. Plant nutrients are inorganic substances, mainly obtained by absorption from the soil. Roots are for the plant what the mouth is for humans. Since plants are not able to digest food, you may ask yourself, who takes care of the nutrient supply of plants? This is exactly what this video is about. Now we address the issue of the nutrient supply for plants in agriculture and also how useful several rest streams can be for sustainable agriculture. What do plants eat? From this visual it can be derived that the only thing plants need is dead plants. Isn't that strange? The visual shows the nutrient supply of plants in a natural situation. It's a closed cycle that does not need any help from human beings. After a plant or parts of the plant, for example leaves, die, organisms that live in the soil will decompose the dead plant material into humus. Humus will be decomposed in smaller molecules like fulvic acid and humic acid. Finally, the humus will be decomposed into inorganic components at a low decomposition rate. Plants contain different compounds of which the decomposition rate is significantly different. This process of nutrient recycling provides plants with nutrients for the whole year round. Soil living organisms involved in this nutrient recycling can be considered as the organs of a digestive system. We can distinguish microbiota, mesobiota and macrobiota. Have you ever been aware which kind and how many organisms live in soil? A natural system doesn't need human help to maintain. Regardless of some natural losses, the nutrient cycle is closed, nothing is removed and nothing has to be added. However, the situation on cultivated land differs in at least two ways compared to natural systems. First, there is harvest and second, there is fertilization. In the middle of the 18th century, it was thought that plants only need nitrogen phosphor and potassium to grow. These components belong to the so-called macronutrients. Next to carbon, hydrogen and oxygen, plants need these components in large amounts. Later on it was found that also calcium, magnesium and sulfur are also micronutrients. However, they are not the only essential components for plant growth, as was discovered already about 60 years later, early 20th century, when the first micronutrients were discovered. Micronutrients, 
or trace elements that are necessary for plant growth and health include boron, magnesium, manganese, iron, zinc, copper, molybdenum and selenium. From the beginning of the 20th century, artificial fertilizers were applied in agriculture to increase the grow rate and yielding of crops. Application rates were focused on the macronutrients. Many fertilizers only contain these nutrients and plants fed with them will need to absorb necessary micronutrients from the soil. Soil will get deficient in micronutrients and the quality of the harvest will decrease. Be aware that the production fertilizers burdens the environment. The production of nitrogen fertilizers consumes a lot of fossil energy. Both phosphorus and potassium are obtained from mining and these fertilizers are often contaminated with heavy metals like cadmium. Harvesting crops from arable land makes fertilizing necessary. You see, harvesting implies the removal of a significant amount of nutrients from the land, both macro and micronutrients. To be able to grow in the next season, it is essential to return these nutrients to or into the soil to at least the same extent. Closing the nutrient cycle is essential for sustainable agriculture. To repair the nutrient cycle, artificial fertilizers can be applied. The application of artificial fertilizers provides plants immediately with macronutrients because these fertilizers rapidly dissolve in groundwater. A disadvantage of applicating artificial fertilizers for soil quality is that these fertilizers do not feed the soil organisms involved in the decomposition of dead organic matter. It is this decomposition that provides soil and plants for the essential micronutrients. A consequence of using artificial fertilizers only is that soil becomes poor in organic matter content as a result of which soil is not capable of holding water and nutrients. To close the loop, to keep the soil healthy now and in the future, we must feed the soil and we must return as much as possible both macro and micronutrients to the soil. This can easily be done by application of effective organic matter in the form of digested animal manure, compost from aerobic or anaerobic fermentation and other organic fertilizers. However, we can do more to close the loop. The production of food creates rest streams, products that are unfit for human consumption. In a bio-based economy, rest streams are not waste, but byproducts. For instance, these byproducts can be applied to make animal feed, generate energy and organic fertilizer. Rest streams from food, feed industry, sewage sludge, sludge from water treatment plants, human urine and feces and compost contain a lot of very useful nutrients. To face the mineral depletion, to keep soil healthy, it's a challenge to regain the nutrients from these industrial rest streams. It's the most important requirement for a bio-based economy which is sustainable. Sustainable in this context means it meets the needs of the present without compromising the needs of the future. We hope you liked this introduction about nutrients and soil as a fundament of bio-based economy. If you have any ideas to improve this video, or if you have any questions, suggestions or remarks, please take the initiative to contact us. We would like to encourage that. We wish you good luck with your assignments.